Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. This is another clip from a recent live event with my members. If you want to be present at these live events, check out the membership page and get involved if you want, and you'll be invited to join us. We do weekly lives. In this conversation, we're going to talk about SPS. We talked, we touched on vouchers, but truly it's just focused on SPS and whether or not we can get to 50 cents and then when would that happen? And how important is it that SPS stop being circulated? That's part of this conversation too. Uh, but I definitely think that you're going to enjoy this one, especially if you are invested in Splinterlands and you are building your own bag of SPS. Stick around, stay tuned, like, and subscribe. This is a very important question. And gathering, I'm open to being con 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 I'm open to being convinced about what you're saying here. What I said, and I th I think I, I I tried to be clear, but maybe I should be more explicit. I do not feel 100% sure we reach 50 cents, but I do feel pretty darn sure. How sure am I? And, and, and I guess before I give a percentage of how sure am I, we have to remember that who, you know, in some sense I'm guessing and then I'm, I'm guessing. And then I'm telling you why I'm telling you like how confident I am in my guess. And you might say, well, who cares? Like, it's just, you, you admit it's just a guess. True. But I'm, I think I'm considering the fundamentals. I don't want to rehash a video I've already done. Um, I might say, and you probably watched a gathering. So let's just point to it. I'll point to the content I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm thinking about right now that articulates, you know, um, why I think we could reach 50 cents. And, 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 uh, and then I'll try and answer your question. I think, first of all, it's important to note that other tokens during bull markets, especially small caps, 40 times 40 X is actually not that big in crypto. That's that, that is a kind of a superficial point. It's not deeply important. It's anecdotal, but a lot of times 40 X is quite easy. That's part of it. It's not a big part of it, but it's part of it. Another, a bigger part of my consideration around maybe us reaching 50 cents or higher. And I really mean or higher. I truly believe this could get wild. But again, I don't want to I don't want to bet my fortunes on wild. I don't want to sit back and wait for five dollars because, man, it, I think theoretically it could happen. That would make me like quite wealthy. But I don't want to do that. That feels like a real gamble. That feels like a highly unlikely reality. I think there's some probability, some possibility of it. I truly believe that. But do you know what I mean? Like you have to, there's real world implications here. It's like, if we got to 50 cents and I got 200,000 SPS, a hundred grand us, that's no joke. That's, that's a big impact in my life. And then if we got, if I, but I, uh, let's say I don't take, I don't I get the 50 cents and I'm like, Nope, going to wait for five bucks. What if we never get there? What if we go to 50 cents and we fall back down to one or half a penny? or less man that would be a kick in the arse right so i don't really know what the future is i'm just saying i want to i want to i i want to speculate for my own life for my own heart for my own prelance as to what could happen and what is most likely to happen and i'm okay with it going farther if i exit the you know if i get it i'm never going to leave sps fully but i actually want to create a plan for how i'm going to sell uh, half of my sps that's kind of where my head's at, like 100,000 SPS ish. I'm thinking 50 cents might be that number. And maybe you're right, gathering, and we never get there. But just again, quickly, can I do this? Here's my content. No, bear with me, guys. I did that. Probably the video, the video that's probably the most clearly articulating. my view on this of how 50 cents is possible i've done i've done several videos i've got this one here we will burn 100 million sps for dec i think that's possible and i think that would have real ramifications for the price of sps there's also not enough dec or sps we don't have nearly enough dec or, or sps and i think this is true I think in that video, I cite, I, 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 I clip aggro talking about 
what's going to happen and how DEC is going to be needed and how little of it's truly available and how little of the SPS is truly available and, and what that could do. Um, and then there was a one hour video or was it two hours where I hosted, I hosted uh, Stever. So I don't see that one right now, but that's, that's three different videos where I've recently t articulated my opinion around how SPS really price appreciation can get wild. And some of that is part of the, it's, it's about, it's about the liquidity pools that exist. It's about there not being enough DEC for land. It's about land launching. Well, it's about DEC having other things too. Like we need, we need DEC for liquidity pools that exist. We need DEC for future liquidity pools that will exist. And as SPS, as DEC reaches peg, which I think is very, very possible in the near future, you start to see SPS being burnt to access DEC so that people can enter into liquidity pools so that people can pay their rental card costs so that people can buy cards off the market because you need DEC or that people can buy Rift Watcher packs because they're growing increasingly scarce. So it's like, it's point after point after point, land being part of it, liquidity pools being a big part of it, where I think we truly could see the flywheel going in a big way. And if we if we burn something like 10 million, 50 million, 100 million SPS, that will have big implications for the price of SPS. And then as the price of SPS escalates, you will see greater, you will see significant increases to the APRs on these pools, DC die, DC BUSD. And right now there's 400,000 in, in each of them roughly. <clears throat> if we saw, if you saw the APR double, I bet you see the liquidity double. If you saw the APR double again, I see you bet, I bet you see the liquidity double again. So imagine that DC die, DC BUSD, we're talking 800,000 total liquidity in each of those pools. That means half of that's DC, call it $400,000 worth of DC in those two pools. If the APR doubles, all that means is SP, SPS goes from 1.8 cents to 3.6 cents. Then that APR doubles. So if we make it to 3.6 cents, which I don't think you would disagree is, I, I think that's quite easy. If we make it there, then you see the doubling of this, which means that there's going to be a, a chasing after the APR, which means a doubling of the liquidity in these two respective pools, which is a doubling of the DEC that's in there. I said 400,000 worth of DEC is in there now. It would be 800,000 at 3.6 cents. At, at 8 cents, it's going to be $1.6 million worth of DEC. Do you see how quickly that gets carried away? It grows dramatically because the APRs grow grow dramatically as APR changes, or sorry, as SPS value changes because the rewards are paid in SPS. So that is integral to my vision for how these things get carried away. I think it starts with just a little growth in the game, just a little bit like tower defense launching and people needing an SPS bag to get those rewards. Tower defense being exciting and enjoyable, more people come into it. Splinterlands game growing in sort of its audience and that might be because as SPS goes up from 1.8 cents to 4 cents, that doubles your payouts on your daily rewards. So what does that do? When you have daily rewards that are now, you know, 20 cents a win, I think you start getting more voices. And then when they come in chasing at the 20 cents a win, it maybe goes to 5 cents, 6 cents per SPS. So there's five or six factors that feed into SPS appreciating. And those things actually have this hurricane effect where, cause they feed into one in, into another. Cause if SPS price goes up, interest in liquidity pools goes up. If, if liquidity pool interest goes up, SPS price goes up. If again, right? Re, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. Same with game, with battle rewards, same with tournament rewards. If SPS goes up, tournament rewards go up meaningfully. If tournament rewards go up, desire to be in tournaments goes up. If that means that means card prices go up. That means right? That means rental cards prices go up. That means investors come to it. That means more players come to it. That means more SPS holders because they actually need to buy a bag to, in order to extract the rewards that they want. So it's this that's why it's this actually once that ball starts rolling, it's like a downhill and it will roll faster than you think. That's why 50 cents I think. It's not just and again could be a dollar, could be 25 cents, could be two bucks. I don't really know. I'm trying to think it through. 
I saw another comment from Paul on this topic. But first, actually, Gathering's got something else here. Let's see what you say here. I tried to buy 10% on 10% dips and sell 5% on 10% pumps. Ooh. That way you build a bag and takes a profit. That's smart. That's... Well, sorry, guys. That's really smart. Hang on a second. So you try to buy 10%... On a 10% dip. I wonder what you mean by buy 10%. Like you have an, a certain allowance and you take 10% of that allowance and you put it towards the, the dip. That's smart. And then the selling 5%. Oh, I got you. I got you. So if you have like, if you have 100,000 SPS already, you're trying to buy 10% more on 10% dips. And then you're trying to sell 5% of your total bag on 10% pumps. That's a... Uh, that sounds like wealth management right there, man. That's, I think that might be a wise play. I don't have any sideline money right now, but that sounds really wise. Yeah, you build the bag and take profit at the same time. I like that. Paul says, not sure what price has to be for me to sell some SPS. Mainly because SPS still earns more SPS. Now, when the inflation is complete, that's a different story. I'm a self self-imposed accumulation nation right now. <laughs> yeah. This is this this point's important. Let's spend a moment on this. All it says mainly because SPS SPS is earning me more SPS. Not only that, it isn't it's earning vouchers and theoretically you could sell the vouchers. I know they're cratering, but still there's some value there. <clears throat> and then And then SPS is it's not just earning you more SPS. Hang on, let's let's unpack this a bit. Oops, not credits. So your total SPS stake is garnering you. It's garnering you battle rewards when you play the game, and at least for me, that's a, a pretty substantial. You know, it's a. I, I don't actually. I've never seen. How, I don't know exactly how many it is every day. I guess I could go to Splinter, um, Splex or something. But, um, you know, it's not nothing. It's a few hundred. And if, if I'm right about SPS one day being a dollar, imagine over the last, this is the crazy thing. Remember, you've heard me say retroactive raise before that phrase, meaning the value of the tokens, the, how much is an SPS worth? Is it worth 1.8 pennies or is it worth a dollar? The question in my mind truly is a, a matter of when you ask the question. Today, it's worth a 1.8 cents. Are you selling your SPS today? I'm not. And... I'm going to hold them. I'm going to accumulate them today, tomorrow, the next day until I believe the price reaches a target that makes sense. And actually, some of them I'll never sell. And so I actually believe, and I may be wrong, but I believe I will reach a target of a dollar plus. And so when I get a few hundred SPS a day from Battle Rewards, I think it is. We can check that in a minute, but I don't want to get distracted. That's hundreds of dollars a day. That's crazy. That's crazy. But I think it's probable which is mind blowing, but I do. And then, so that this is part of it. Like when, when Paul talks about how SPS is earning him more SPS, he talked about the stick. <clears throat> Sorry, the, hang on one sec. <clears throat> when Paul refers to the fact that his SPS is giving him more SPS, there's a, there's an APR on it. That's a 15% APR. Wow, that used to be a lot higher. But still, that's an APR that you're just getting new SPS by holding SPS. And that SPS, while you're holding it in stake, is actually garnering also battle rewards. It's theoretically also allowing you to enter and maybe win some of the tournaments that you have access to, right? So it has this, it's not just the APR, the 15% on the stake. It's also the 15% plus the battle reward, plus possibly tournament rewards, etc. And so, and I guess even you might argue as a tangential consideration, SPS stake gives you weighted power and authority over our DAO proposals, which might have implications for your financial future in this game. So having a voice to control the direction of the investment is probably great. I, I don't know if you could put a tangible value on that, but there, you know what I mean? There's a value to that of some nature. And then... I said it earlier. Let's touch it quickly again. You're also getting, you're getting uh, vouchers out of your stake. 
And so those vouchers, though relatively inconsequential, are not nothing. You could sell them and buy SPS. So yeah, man, there this is the this is part of the conversation, part of the trick. How do we just how do we sell our SPS? Like what how do we assign a price target to where we would get off the, the ride when we have to when we when we reconcile with the reality that selling the SPS will diminish the future returns available to us. And yet I think my argument would be that there is as uh, even though Paul, I agree with where your head's at, I still feel there's a moment where it's prudent to take profit. And I, that's why I kind of like, well, I mean, I like anybody's recipe. If you've got a recipe for it, like thoughtful time gated or target based, you know, profit taking, I love it. Gathering your idea is great. You know, waiting for 50 cents might be a bit bullish. It might be end up being foolish. But to me, I feel like I want to weigh what Paul is saying. Because Paul is saying, I don't ever, in some sense, Paul is saying, I don't ever want to sell an SPS. Like, I don't, I don't, I, I, this is really important to me. These, these tokens are really deeply meaningful. And I get that. And so out of that posture, I actually, part of me doesn't like, I'm, I'm, I'm almost okay. If I wait for 50 cents, we don't get there. Like with my XRP token holdings, I have a pretty big bag of XRP. You know, we were at 90 cents or 85 cents or something when the SEC lawsuit came through. And you know what I didn't do? I didn't sell one. I don't, I don't care. That would have been like a, that would have been a significant profit for me. You know, I bought most of them around 15 cents. So that would have been a significant profit for me. And I, and I was paying attention. I was, you know, attentive. I could have sold, but I had, I have no interest in these, in the, those sorts of gains. Like, you know, even if I called, that's like an eight X or a seven X or something, that's really cool. Maybe that's pretty meaningful. Maybe it's, you know, it would have helped me in a lot of ways financially, but you know what? I just, that's not what I'm here for. I'm in crypto because I believe it can change. the future of finance. I actually think blockchain based video games are wrapped into that. So when I look at Splinterlands and SPS, when I look at tokens, I believe in I'm, I'm, I'm holding on to remember Necro Necro said earlier, just enjoy the process while you're here. And, and so I'm enjoying the process while I'm here. I mean, I'm ravenous for more of the rewards. Like I want more of these rewards, not less. And so, and I believe in the, f that this game is fun and it has a future. So those, that's a, that's a foundation that I've just laid that, that gives me a degree of satisfaction, confidence, and peace associated with the care, the risk I'm carrying by continuing to hold the assets I've accumulated, right? Cause the, the assets I have have a paper value that's meaningful. That paper value is not money until such time that I sell it. If I sell it, I lose future tokens that can come toward me. So, so there's this, I'm Oak. I like where I'm at. I like what I've got. I believe in its future. I'm happy to set targets that might not be realized, but probably I think will be 50 cents. I really do think is probably the next bull market. We see that I think a dollar is plausible. And maybe what I would do is something like, and this is total, just, these are just numbers I've drawn out of the air, but I might sell half of my SPS for hundred thousand at 50 cents. And if we got to a dollar, I might sell another half. And then if we got to five bucks, another like two bucks, another half, five bucks, another half. So I'm never really selling at all, but you know, I would be, I would be wanting to do something like that, like a tiered exit. Because the, the price would get to these, the, like, again, who knows? We, we might never get to those numbers, but I'm saying if we got to those numbers, I want to have something to lock in at that. And that's kind of, I think that's the best way to approach it. At least that's how I'm, I'm thinking about some of my other investments. Yeah. Yeah. Gathering says once staking rewards are done. We don't get any SPS in guild brawls or rank battles. Then it should move. 
This is logical, but I'm not sure I agree. I have maybe a couple things to say to you gathering. One is that we might choose to extend the SPS payouts, meaning print more SPS. So this vision for the future might never be realized. That's part one of my answer to you. My part two of my answer to you is that SPS supply, you, you are articulating a view that the SPS supply is going to increase and increase and increase until it's no longer issued and then it'll it'll cease increasing and i'm saying i actually articulated this a few minutes ago i think we might through the sps flywheel delete a noticeable and an impactful amount of sps from existence and that can never be recreated so i don't actually buy that we need to wait until the end of its issuance people say there's too much sps people say it's always growing and the price therefore has to come down that's not true because if the flywheel works and granted it hasn't taken effect yet but if the flywheel works as it's expected to work and i think i could argue quite logically and reasonably for how it will work and in this video i have touched on that already i think you get to a place where you start to realize Okay, SPS could actually move down in supply in a radical way within a short period of time because of, remember, as we described earlier, what? There's two considerations, fundamentals as well as emotions. And I think emotions get carried away. People chase after with exuberance gains. And then I think you, because there's not nearly enough DEC, I think flywheel goes. And that's, so, so I don't know that I, th there's two, Things to think about anyways uh because yeah i don't think we have to wait that long and i and then also man gathering if, if you if this is kind of where your where your head's at i just i want you to maybe ask that question of yourself let's say we get to the end of sps printing do you truly believe that splinterlands is going to allow the, the rank reward experience, the guild brawl experience, the tournament experience to have no more compensation? I think you would say no. But you might argue the DAO will be sufficient and it will provide those rewards at that time. And that might be true. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying that's not going to work out. I'm just saying I am not really expecting SPS to end in, 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 in terms of its issuance ever. But I'm willing to be wrong about that. It depends on the DAO and how we handle it. Depends on how we invest that money. Depends on the multipliers available there. It depends on a lot of different factors that I don't know the answer to yet. It's just that I want you to remember and think about, we don't really know that SPS is gonna stop being issued. And I think we shouldn't think of it that way as if it's a certainty, that's all. USD, USD equals part token, infinite print run. Yeah, that's right. That's absolutely right. Speaking of part, I, I was just trying to buy some today because I want to upgrade my my, my, my stuff, but I, I just can't. I can't right now. There's too little. I've got too little gunpowder and I got too many things to to shoot at, let's say. Uh, gathering, I think we eventually go away above 50 cents, probably a couple dollars, but not until it's no longer given away. I definitely see that as a logical consideration. If I... If, I, if my response to your last comment didn't say that, I do say I do think what you're saying is logical. It's just, I think, I don't think logic is all that matters though. That's, that's the emotion side of the conversation that I've talked about. I really truly believe 50 cents doesn't have to make sense for us to get there. But I do think it's important to have thoughtful ways, logical ways for how it would be possible and I, and I, that's why I try to talk about the burning, the flywheel, the liquidity pools, the land operation, etc. Because those are, 
paths that that provide some logical consideration and then you have to add in the the, the difficult to calculate emotional side I'm more bullish on vouchers than SPS. Vouchers at some point will have this. Will have daily utility in small amounts. If vouchers are used in land for paying for taxes or transportation costs, watch the price go up. Yeah, I agree with you. But then I wonder. I agree with you that voucher prices, vouchers are being slept on. You can even look at like the value assigned to them, the peg value assigned to them from the, how the game accepts them, I guess 20 cents. So, I mean, from that perspective alone, they should, they should carry a higher value. And then as new utility comes, and I think new utility will come, that price should go up as you say. And if there was such a sort of important implication for the use of vouchers, as you allude to with like land taxes, et cetera, then I would argue that you're probably right. I don't really buy that that'll be the avenue that the game goes with the utilization of vouchers. I think we're too fixated on getting the flywheel going, which is I, in my man, in my opinion, I'm convinced like Ag aggro has convinced me the flywheel is the most important thing for game adoption, player-based growth, Price appreciation, success of Splinter Lands, huge filling out the 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 treasury or the um not the treasury, I mean the war chest of Splinterlands the company so that they can survive, survive future bear markets. That's a lot of arguments for why focusing on DEC back to peg and flywheel ignition. I don't know what else, what other word to say there. The beginning of the flywheel is so important. In my opinion, it's more important than vouchers. It's more important than validators nodes. It's more important than, you know, gem pack valuations or chaos card valuations, etc. because those things are actually tied, chained to the economy. <clears throat> Cards produce DC when you, when you rent them out or they produce SPS when you play with them. Those valuations is a productivity that come from your cards. So as you own a, as you own assets, they produce money. If the money they produce goes up, the revenue either from a sale or a rental of these assets will go up. I think you follow me. If these cards produce greater revenues than tomorrow, than they do today, the value of the card will go up because the revenue from them goes up. And I think for those reasons, we want SPS price to, the, like I said earlier, the interconnected nature is absolutely key to this economy. The genius of Splinterlands is in part the interconnected nature of the economy. And the fact that SPS is your reward for rank play, for liquidity pool participation, for land farming, etc., means that as SPS price appreciates, you will see greater desire to participate and succeed at those different touch points, rank battles, tournaments, land operation, liquidity pool participation. SPS absolutely drives adoption player base everything about this and yeah the game's mechanics and the joy of playing is important we have to want we have to have people that want to play the game i'm not i'm not arguing that i don't care if the game's fun or not I, but i am saying man the finances of the opportunity of splinterlands and this ecosystem is definitely a driving factor and a driving force for how we will grow. So there is a conversation about the game is how fun is the game? How entertaining is it? That's important because the user base will be attracted as it gets more and more entertaining. True, true, true. But man, you know what is an even bigger sales pitch to come check out Splinterlands? Hey guys, 
you actually can you can you can earn two dollars and fifty cents per win when you play this game. That's what I that that argument that sentence will drive more adoption than. Hey, check out this collectible card base game that you need to spend a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars and, and it's kind of cool and the game's fun and it's like oh you lost me already unless unless you can say that second sentence like let's see this win here 19 hours ago <clears throat> you know that i you know i probably got five six maybe seven eight sps for this win i don't know i haven't i haven't seen it yet as it plays out i'll just talk over the video you know that I got a significant amount of SPS for this win. And you know that if that SPS is appreciating in value, the sales pitch associated with Splinterlands goes through the roof, right? Like it just transforms the conversation. If I can say to you, man, there's a ton, a ton of value available here. You just need to you need to rent some cards. You need to check out Nifty Arcade. You need to figure out the rental market. You need to, and there are paths to playing this game with relatively little income. That's the other conversation, but that's more, that's even like the next level. The first point is if I can tell you at 50 cents, SPS is at 50 cents, you can get five SPS per win at champion diamond. That is going to drive crazy new player adoption. And then simultaneously, like, Here's how the second conversation is. Well, how do I get in at that level? Do I need to spend a hundred thousand dollars in cards? Look at that. 10 SPS, 9.67, sorry, 9.697 SPS is what I just earned for that win. If that's 50 cents in SPS, that's a $5 win. You do that 10 times a day, 50 bucks a day, 50 bucks a day. And I'll tell you what, if SPS is ever at 50 cents a, a per, bet your ass I'm buying energy out the wazoo, right? And energy is, you can now buy as much as you want. So I'm buying, I'm converting that to DC, which is burning SPS, which is helping the SPS price appreciate even more. And and I will be one of, I don't know, 400,000 accounts doing that. That's what I think will happen. Maybe a million, because I think that sort of, that sort of attraction will drive crazy new adoption. And I think every account that can afford to burn some SPS to get some more energy, like you won't burn all of it. You'll make, you'll make five bucks a win. You'll burn what you'll burn like a dollar of SPS. I like, I don't, I think it's about 10 bucks. <clears throat> if I go, hang on, let's look at this. Buying 24 energy costs $12 at champion. And so if I was making five bucks per win and I can win 10 times a day, I probably can win 15 times a day. But if I could win 10 times a day regularly without buying energy, that's 50 bucks. I'm going to spend 12 bucks out of that 50 bucks and, and buy more energy to have a full other 24 matches, which is going to give me another 10 wins, which is another 50 bucks, which is going to let me buy more energy. So do you see how rapidly that would translate across 400,000 accounts, across a million accounts, which is definitely possible when this game is paying five bucks per win. That's definitely possible. And what would that do for the, like to go back to my earlier point, what would that do to the interconnected nature of this game? It would draw new players because they want to see those rewards that would drive up card prices because they need to access the game through card cards that they rent or buy. The SPS, sorry, the DC rental prices associated with cards would shoot to the moon, which would further drive card prices up because one, I can earn with them by playing with them or two, I can rent them and make huge profits. The card value goes up again. And then the D, the, this SPS price is shooting to the moon. That's, that's cards I just talked about, but what about land? SPS is shooting to the moon, land produces SPS. So now I need to get into that action too, because man, there's only 10 or 15 or 20% of the plus land activated at the beginning because that's my prediction. But man, 80% of the other land could be activated and earn SPS. That's now 50 cents a, a piece. This is meaningful. So again, they need cards for that land. They need DEC for that land. What does that do for DEC? Drives it up. What does it do for land or cards? Drives it up. What does it do for land? Drives it up. It's so interconnected. And I'm not saying that the game's entertaining element is unimportant i'm saying that the most important driver will be the price of sps and therefore 
vouchers become in some sense not irrelevant they 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 somehow need to be considered again in the future they need to be there needs to be new consideration brought into them in some sense they were a bit of a missed moment they the vision for what they were supposed to be is not what they are and we right now because of everything i just said can't focus on them because i think there's nothing more important than dc to peg flywheel working period it will drive every element of this game into higher highs it'll drive player base to new places it'll it'll create a new war chest for the game for the splinter lines the company and just there's benefit after benefit after benefit after benefit because of the genius associated with how the tokenomics were planned and how this game was created that's this is man this is the writings on the wall is the crazy thing like this everything i just said to you you could stop and slow down and rewind and watch again and be like is he right about that is that is it really truly that interconnected and you can test it for yourself now like thoughtfully now walk through some of that and 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 again i are i was arguing that that, that those truths would be real at 50 cent sps but i would argue that those truths are real even now but they grow in magnitude at every price interval increase for SPS. So if you think SPS is going to grow up, sorry, gain in value at all ever, then you need to reconcile or you need to re you need to acknowledge, I think, that the the the, the processes and outcomes I just articulated will occur. So SPS gets to five cents. That's double where it's at. Again, that's going to drive a greater degree of attention, even at 50 cents a win. Not everyone I just described. It's not going to be the craziness that I just described, but it's going to be an, it's going to turn up the dial. And then as the dial gets turned up, we see new interest. We see new investment. We see new accounts. We see new acquisition of SPS and DC, and that turns up the dial more. And th so that's why it's this like, it's like this cyclone, man, point there it's dominoes one falls over it hits the next one falls over it hits next and it's it's at four cents it's at eight cents it's at 16 cents it's this is how the economy was built and this is why i walk in such a degree of confidence so long as they stay fixated on this one thing flywheel working so that's where i'm at that's where the bullishness comes from and like i said earlier the bearishness will come when the bull market is in full swing You'll hear me being bearish. You'll hear, you'll hear me calling for prudence, saying things like take profits. But for now, we haven't seen any of that. And so I'm willing, at least, to wait on it and have fun in the process.